Good morning. Please stand as we begin our celebration. We will sing Amazing Grace, number 645. Amazing Grace, number 645. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found, was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to see, and grace Relief, how precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. Good morning. Good morning. Today we pray especially for Hilda Provenzale and also for our families and our parish. We pray also for Maurice Harwood. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Graciously, Hear the prayers of those who call upon you. We ask, O oh Lord, and forgive the sins of those who confess to you, granting us in your kindness both pardon and peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. The man had relations with his wife, Eve, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have produced a man with the help of the Lord. Next she bore his brother, Abel. Abel became a keeper of flocks, and Cain a tiller of the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought an offering to the Lord from the fruit of the soil, while Abel, for his part, brought one of the best firstlings of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering he did not. Cain greatly resented this and was crestfallen. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you so resentful and crestfallen? If you do well, you can hold up your head. 
But if not, sin is a demon lurking at the door. His urge is toward you, yet you can be his master. Cain said to his brother Abel, let us go out in the field. When they were out in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord asked Cain, where is your brother Abel? And he answered, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? Then the Lord said, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the soil. Therefore, you shall be banned from the soil that opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. If you till the soil, it shall no longer give you its produce. You shall become a restless wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is too great to bear. Since you have now banished me from the soil, and I must avoid your presence, and become a restless wanderer on the earth, anyone may kill me in sight. Not so, says the Lord. If anyone kills Cain, Cain shall be avenged sevenfold. So the Lord put a mark on Cain, lest anyone should kill him at sight. Adam again had relations with his wife, and she gave birth to a son whom she called Seth. God has granted me more offspring in the place of Abel, she said, because Cain slew him. The word of the Lord. Offer to God a sacrifice of praise. God the Lord has spoken and summoned the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you, for your burnt offerings are before me always. Offer to God a sacrifice of praise. Why do you recite my statutes and profess my covenant with your mouth, though you hate discipline and cast my words behind you? Offer to God a sacrifice of praise. You sit speaking against your brother. Against your mother's son, you spread rumors. When you do these things, shall I be deaf to it? Or do you think that I am like yourself? I will correct you by drawing them up before your eyes. Offer to God a sacrifice of praise. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I am the way and the truth and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Pharisees came forward and began to argue with Jesus, seeking from him a sign from heaven to test him. He sighed from the depth of his spirit and said, why does this generation seek a sign? Amen, I say to you, no sign will be given to this generation. Then he left them, got into the boat again, and went off to the other shore. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. 
This is one of those gospel passages that just make me smile because I just recognize the true humanity of Jesus in the midst of this. A lot of times, you know, Jesus who is divine, he's fully human and fully divine. And sometimes we get so focused on his divinity, which is good, but we should also remember his humanity. And even in his humanity, it shows us right here how frustrated he gets sometimes for good reason. He had just multiplied a few loaves into enough to feed 4,000 people with seven baskets left over. And now here come the Pharisees saying, okay, well, if you're really who you say you are, give us a sign. I, I'm sorry, 4,000 people just ate from seven loaves of bread. What more do you want? And some of the great commentaries on this is to remind us of when the Israelites were walking through the desert and God fed them with miraculous manna from heaven. And yet then, even then, they said, oh, we know we've seen all the plagues of Egypt. You brought us out. The waters parted. Pharaoh and his armies have gone. You even gave us bread from heaven. But gosh, we'd really like some meat. You know, there's always something more. And this is a, a passage today that's even really challenged me because I recognize in my own life how often I am praying not a, really a prayer of trust, but a prayer of, oh God, please help me. Will you please help me to stand here and proclaim your word and help me get over my anxiety? And often, he has been very gracious with me, I feel the Spirit say to me, I'm with you in that gentle way. But when I read this passage today, it was very convicting to me because I had to say, Lord, I'm sorry for so many times I keep saying, help me God, help me God, because I'm, what, not trusting you? You have never failed me. You have always been there for me. What more do I need? And so I started thinking about what are the signs that God has given us in our lives? All the signs that he has given us that he is with us, that he is journeying with us, that he is not leaving us on our own. And we begin, first of all, with the waters of baptism. When we think about the sacraments, that he brings us into his very divine life by uniting us with him in baptism confirming us, giving us gifts from the Holy Spirit. And then he gives us bread from heaven. Every single Mass, we get to experience his presence in this Holy Eucharist. And this year, there's a Eucharistic revival going on in the church, which I think is beautiful and very much needed for us to maybe reflect on the very gift of himself that he gives us to remind us, hey, you're never alone. I am always with you even to the end of the age. We may not see him, and we may say, well, Lord, I, I mean, I only kind of see you with my heart, but he's trying to tell us that's enough because I'm giving you my grace in this Holy Eucharist. There's a great prayer from St. Thomas Aquinas, and I just wanted to read part of it. It's part of his Eucharistic adoration, and I thought that this really brings out what we should be looking for. He says, by his word, the word almighty makes of bread his flesh indeed. Wine becomes his very lifeblood. Faith, God's living word, must heed. Faith alone may safely guide us where the senses cannot lead. Come, adore this wondrous presence. Bow to Christ, the source of grace. Here is kept the ancient promise of God's earthly dwelling place. Sight is blind before God's glory. Faith alone may see his face. And I thought about that last line. There's a time in the, um, in the Old Testament when the pilgrims would come through Jerusalem and there was in the temple bread and wine. And the priests would bring out at a certain time of the pilgrimage one of the loaves of bread and they would hold it up and they would say to the pilgrims, behold the face of God. Behold the face of God. And it's to remind us even today in this Eucharistic celebration, when you see that host elevated, bread that has been consecrated and now is the very body and blood, soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. When Father elevates that host, let us also by faith hear those words. Behold the face of God who is with you always. You are never alone. What more do we need? He is with us always.
Let us offer our prayers to God for the needs of the church, society, the parish, people in need, the sick and suffering, and those who have died. For God's church on earth, may the Lord continue to increase her in holiness and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our world, may Christ's peace touch the hearts of leaders and influencers and lead them to pursue justice and harmony. Let us pray to the Lord. For victims of violence or discrimination, may they be comforted by the presence and justice of God. Let us pray to the Lord. For the needs of this faith community, may the boundless love of Christ heal any doubt in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. For Maurice Harwood and all who have died, may they be welcomed into the light of the heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. And for those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayers, loving Father, on this day. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Blessed are the Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and word of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, Fruit of the of fruit of the vine and water of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters in Christ, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God. We offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise 
that being moved to compassion, you may both pardon our offenses and direct our wavering hearts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up, lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, his death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we pray you as without end we acclaim. Comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewful, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and given thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and was more given thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, given thanks that you have held that worthy to be your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Janun and our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. 
Welcome them into the light of your face. And mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, with the Blessed Apostles, Martyrs, and all the saints who have lived you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <laughs> through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and for by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day of daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gratefully grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and great shall I grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
the ministers to the sick, please come forward. Heavenly Father, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit to be with your servants as they take your precious body to the sick and suffering who can't be with us. Keep them under your wings and allow them to do their ministry with great love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Let us pray. Grant us, merciful God, that receiving in this gift, gift the forgiveness of sins, we may be able, by your grace, to avoid sinning from now on and to serve you in sincer sincerity of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thank you. Have a good day. Holy God, we praise thy name. Lord of all, we bow before thee. All on earth thy scepter claim. All in heaven above our 
adore thee, infinite, thy vast domain, everlasting is thy reign, infinite, thy vast domain, everlasting is thy reign.